So our next speaker is uh, Christian Russell Reyes. Uh, he's a biostatistician at Pfizer for the last 14 years and supporting various clinical trials and he's currently the head of statistics at Pfizer India and Philippines and currently supporting the development projects in inflammation and immunology including exploratory analysis of for a vitiligo phase 2 study and he's talking on an analysis of intertake rater and interrater FVASI assessments in adults with active non-segmental vit vitiligo. Over to Christian. Thank you and good morning. So I'll be presenting this in behalf of my uh, co-authors, analysis of inter-rater and intra-rater facial vas assessments in adults with active non-segmental vitiligo. So some disclosure, this study was uh, supported by Pfizer and all of the co-authors um, were connected with Pfizer while working on this study, either as consultants or employees. Okay. So, um, mentioned yesterday by Dr. Samia that there are no currently available therapies capable of consistently stabilizing or repigmenting vitiligo lesions. And given that there are several therapies under development, there is a need for a reliable clinician reported outcome that can assess disease severity and treatment response. So one such measure is the vitiligo area scoring index that was already mentioned several times, including the facial VASI and total VASI that can be used to measure changes in vitiligo over time. So in, uh, in any measure, we want to have consistency even with different users and um, repeated measurements. So in this study, we evaluated inter and intra rater reliabilities of the facial VASI as for assessing extent and severity of vitiligo in a central reader paradigm as part of a phase 2B trial of the oral JAK3 TEC inhibitor ritlacitinib that was presented by Dr. Amit yesterday. Okay. So in this slide, uh, the methods used in, this, in, in the study were summarized. So using the allocation ratio uh, used in the study, in the phase 2B study, wherein the randomization was standard, was standard, uh, was stratified by Fitzpatrick skin type, 70 participants were, um, 70 participants aged 18 to 65 years with active non-vitiligo lesions were randomly selected from the phase 2B study. <clears throat> So the photographs of um, facial vitiligo lesions of the 70 participants were uh, from, from baseline and week 24 were um, analyzed independently by two central readers. The facial VASI scores then were analyzed uh, descriptively and the inter-rater reliability was assessed using correlation coefficient, intra-class correlation, and root mean square deviation. After uh, a one-month interval from the initial pre-read, um, 30 participants were randomly selected from the initial 70 participants. The photographs of these participants were de-identified of patient ID and visit and were randomly presented to one central reader. Uh, the central reader then uh, analyzed these photographs and then after a two-week gap, the same central reader reanalyzed the same set of photographs. The facial VASI scores from these re-reads were then analyzed descriptively, and the intra-rater reliability was assessed using the same three statistics. So here are the results for the inter-rater reliability. On the average, the uh, scores from the first central reader uh, across, overall and across the visit were um, slightly lower compared to the second central reader. But the standard deviation were very similar, and more importantly, the change from baseline and the percent change from baseline were actually um, similar. And the three statistics showed that there is strong and consistent agreement between the central, uh, between the facial basis scores of the two central readers. 
Here are the results for the inter, uh, I mean the intra rate of reliability for the second central reader. Um, on the average, the scores were actually very similar overall and across visit. And the three statistics showed very strong relationship between the uh, facial basis scores uh, between the two reads. Okay, so overall, using a central reading paradigm, strong and consistent inter-rater agreement was observed between the two central readers across all facial BASI measurement. And the intra-rater reliability of facial BASI was also strong and consistent for the second central reader across the two separate readings of the same patient images at baseline and week 24. So uh, to conclude, their facial BASI showed strong inter and intra-rater reliability when assessed using a central reader paradigm. Uh, just an acknowledgement that uh, for, the, for our co-authors, Dr. Esedin and Dr. Shore, and for our medical writing support, Richard Karpowitz. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Amit? Sorry? How did the central reader know when he's looking at the image of the face the size of the patient's finger? If you look at a lesion on the face, you have to know the size of the patient's finger or the hand. Otherwise, you don't know how much involvement there is on the face. So did you have a little picture of the finger in front of the patient? Uh, how, how did the central reader know? I will defer the question to Dr. Esedin, oh. <laughs> one of our central readers. I don't, I don't think that you need it. It's exactly what I was saying. You were measuring the delta between T1 and T0. So even if I'm taking my own finger hand, it's the same. I'm using the same finger hand. And this is the most important thing. <clears throat> the most important thing is, and all this debate about the fingertips should be 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 or 0, or 0 this or 0 this, is a false debate. We are measuring, we are capturing the delta between a time and another. And if I take, for example, a fingertip of one at point 0.0, and I take the same fingertip of one, and it becomes 0 0.5, okay? So the delta will be 0 0.5. Half, 50%. If I take the same, another fingertip, 0 0.7, I'm dividing by half, it's 0 0.35. It's exactly the same. The difference is 50%. And this is what we are missing at any time when we are discussing scores. I think the VASI, the PASI, there is no perfect score. There are just scores that fit reality the most, and that's all. Uh, I think every score has uh, advantage and disadvantage. And honestly, going to, I feel that doing image G for every patient, it's very difficult very difficult and probably a source of error because you can forget one lesion or another more than doing with your own fingertip or your own hand. I'm just going to give an alternative view. Uh, yes, I am interested in knowing if there's improvement of 30%, 40%, 70%. Of course I'm interested in that. But I would like to know what the baseline F VASI was. If it's a child and you are wrongly estimating that the facial VASI is actually 1.5, but the actuality is, is 0.5, and in the entire cohort, you're making that same mistake, and you say, in this study of children, the, the mean F VASI, judged by central raters, was 1.5. That's important to me. That tells me what the severity of the vitiligo was at baseline, and that helps me in my practice, uh, in terms of how I'm going to approach. I'm not saying use image J. I'm saying put a picture, have the pa patient hold their finger next to their cheek, behind their nose, but right at their cheek, so that when I'm looking at the picture, 
I can look at the patient's finger and I can say, okay, now I understand how big the finger, how big the fingertip is. That's, that's what I was asking. You know, if, if I could add something. Um, so, a couple of questions. The scaling is important, and I want to kind of get into this debate a little bit, just because it's fun, it's in the morning, I don't need caffeine. But I do believe that you have to assess surface area consistently. So if you have two different computer systems screens and you're on a PowerPoint, you can rescale this by mistake. So it is important to make sure that the scaling is done. And then Dr. Bai, I want to give him a lot of credit, Dr. Hung from Korea, they developed the fingertip unit. Inclusion exclusion criteria for the FDA requires that you define the surface area. And that's where the fingertip unit is really critical because it's, you, you know, for the VAS, you, you probably don't need it for the delta, but for the surface area, you really need a fingertip unit. And the fingertip unit should be consistently applied across those two images if you're gonna use pictures. So how did you make sure that the imaging and the measurement on the first screen that you're assessing matched up to the second screen as far as the scaling of the surface area? So you had two images for the central radar. How did central radar Point one, let's say on J January 1st they do the image. How do you make sure that the scale on January 10th is the same? Has the image changed in size and would that affect your surface area assessment? Mm, it, it, so, uh, yeah, that works, it, go ahead. No, I think there is standardization when you are taking image. You don't take image like this. And you, when you take image, there are standards. You have to have a fixed uh, distance when you are taking your image, there are the rules that are defined at the beginning. No, fully agree, but I'm talking about the actual image on the computer. Yes, but the image that you will have on the computer, they are all sizes the same normally. They are all sizes the same. Was it PowerPoint or what, was, what did you see? I don't know. You have to ask them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I have to get back. I, 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 that I have to check. I'm so I think that's where you have to be careful because in PowerPoint, if you have, if somebody does not use a read-only view, they actually go into PowerPoint. By mistake, you can rescale, and that's one thing that we found in our own study. So that's why we had to use those dots to make sure that you had a consistent size. Thank you. 